Hello and welcome to Colibris. This is Marine Dippy and uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to use Photoshop CS5. Um, I think it's one of the best Photoshops because there's more around it, but into the tools. Um, I'm going to skip the move tool. I'm going to skip the rectangle tool. This is the lasso tool. Um, this thing allows you to um, use various lassos to select stuff. So I have that selected. Uh, polygonal one lets me select things with lines. So, like, if I wanted to select the outside of the sign, I could just be like, whoa. And then, and you can get pretty precise with this thing. As many clicks as you're willing to do. But, um, I have a time limit, so. And, like, so. Okay. Before we go down any... I'm just going to explain these ones. This is the magic wand tool. It probably was up with the quick selection tool before the magic wand. This thing allows you to quick select things like tiles or something. Usually only works good with squares or circles, so I don't recommend using this. This one is a single click one which selects stuff instantly. I really don't like it because it usually messes up and spazzes out weird. Crop tool, um, pretty simply, and the um, teaspoon tool, or whatever it's called. What it does is the bottom color tells you what your color used to be, and the top color tells you what it is now. So, there you go. Now, before we get down into these more advanced tools, we're going to um, start off with filters. Okay, so filters are what you can do to really make this stuff look semi-cool. So, with this, I could change this to, um, let's say I wanted to do let's let's go into sketch and go into let's say chrome it'll chrome oh that's horrible but I could I could um change it oh and if you want to zoom out you just hit control and then minus but you can do various stuff with it like crayon it photocopy it stamp torn edges um you can go into artistic stuff and go like paint dabs which or poster edges, rough pastel, smudge stick, underpainting, watercolor, sponge. Why aren't these changing? Oh, it's loading. Sorry. So that's sponge. This is going to be underpainting once it uh, does it. Um, poster edges. Like I said, smudge stick. So, I think I like poster edges. So I'm going to go with poster edges. Uh, um, so, now that we're done with... You can go between various filters, like distort it, too. And you can go, like, wave. And this will allow you to create how many waves you want in the thing. The wave length. And you can wave it. Or you can just totally annihilate it. It doesn't really matter what you do. You can change things so weirdly with this thing. It's it's amazing. But I'm not going to. So now we're on to the spot healing tool. I don't really like this because it doesn't work so well. But you can take something from it and go into another thing. And it'll take what you it got from its first thing and try to fix it like that. So... It'll take this here and try to turn it, do what's up there. But as you can see, it does not work too well. So, it'll probably get that there and mess it up. Yep, but I don't know. I don't really like how it works. So, I'm just going to undo that. Oops, don't need to undo that. Okay. So, then you have your paintbrush, pretty simple, it paints things, so let's say I wanted to say, um, oh, oops, uh, to deselect something, that's when these things right here are going around it, to deselect something, you click control and then D, and it'll unselect it, or you can go to, um, select and then click deselect, but, with paint tool, you can just write things, um, or paint things, so, 
Yeah, I was writing I'm awesome, but that didn't work out too well. Um, so we're just going to undo all that. So um, then we have the clone stamp tool. I really like this thing. Okay, so what this thing does is, oh, um, I have the background selected, so I can't really do anything right now. So uh, right-click it and then do a layer from background, and it'll change your background to a layer instead of a locked background. But what you can do with this is you click out and it'll change it to that little uh, that thing instead of the circle. And you click where you want to start cloning and then you go to this and you can oops, gotta make sure you keep an eye on your uh, little square X thing that you have. Uh, when doing stuff like this, it's better to have a hard one, in my opinion. Um, although, not necessarily so. so yeah. But anyways, just fill that in. You can see where that little X is over there telling you where you are. And, and then you can copy this to get it to look normal up here again. So now it doesn't, it just looks like there was nothing there to begin with. Um, yeah, this this is where the spot healing tool um, messed it up, but whatever. But this is where the price was. Alright, on um, this is the history rush tool, I'm not going to go into detail with that. The eraser tool, of course, you know, it kind of just erases depending on the size of the eraser. So yeah. Um, when it's like this, when it's squarey like that, that means it's transparent. So, or there's, it's going to be white if it's your background that it's being erased. Um, this is the fill bucket tool. If you click on something, it will fill it. So it'll think what it thinks needs to be filled. If you continue to click, like let's say I fill in this O. Um, oh, well I guess it won't do it on this one, but, never mind. But you can uh, fill things in, I guess, if you find that cool. And, um, yep. So there you go. Now you have, uh, real cool stuff. And, uh, cool stuff. And in my opinion, it actually does look like it's, uh, been like that. Um, so yeah. You have your, uh, your blur tool and that allows you to blur things so like let's say you don't like how these edges go you can blur them up you can see how the uh it changed and it just kind of blurs it i don't know the thing i like about the blur tool is if it, you want to make something look like it's moving you can but it's not super good unless you're just trying to soften edges so um yep um yeah the burn tool this thing just makes things kind of and tries to make it look burnt so let's say i tried to make this tool look burnt Now it kind of looks like the bottom of that too was burnt. So, I don't know, it does it okay. Pen tool, um, what it does is it makes a straight line. You let go, and it takes the top part. And so you do that, you do that, and it will take the top part of it. And you can make some pretty cool looking stuff like with this thing. I like it better than the, uh, the, uh, the normal tool, but yeah, then it made that look like a, a name, so I'm going to undo all that. Uh, 
I have that on, dude. Next is the text option. Um, you can add text in, I guess. So we'll put two thousand. And of course, this doesn't look very good because um, I'm not spending a lot of time on it. But if you wanted, you could select that. And since you're on a new layer when you create text, then I could go like um, right click, um, then like blending options, and you could go to let's say bevel, and you could increase the bevel size. Soften it up some, change the bevel to an outer bevel, like that. But, um, yeah, so you can change how things look. I don't know, I guess it looks like it's been there a little bit more if I was to get rid of that. But, um, yeah. So, that is pretty much all the tools. Um, that are going to be used. So that's the basic thing. In the next, um, in the next one, I will show you how to use. Well, actually, I'll show you how to make a neon background like this. So, yep, from scratch. All right. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe, like, and comment. It really helps us out. And uh, thank you.